Hmm. In today's episode, we're sculpting this, which means we're carving this into this. We'll show you how we do it, work some mad detailing magic, recap our sculpture, and dazzle you with breathtaking cinematics. Looking for top five entertainment for the next 40 minutes? Then park it right here and stick around. Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and you have made your way back to Pangasus Bay. Hey, it's great to have you here. And we're looking in across the subject of today's build, which is the Aviators Ridge part of town. Aviators Ridge, of course, aptly gets its name because it sits on a ridge overlooking the Amelia Earhart International Airport. Yeah, you can see this ridge as I jump down in here. It sits right up above here, and I think this would be a great place to put some big estate homes, some villas up there. I don't know what you guys think, but some spectacular views you could get up there. And of course, you're sitting on this ridge here too, and you got some beautiful views of downtown Pangasus Bay. Now, there's a lot of extra space down in here too, and we've got a need for residential in the space. Our residential population was kind of taking a nosedive a little bit there. And as you recall, last episode, we built out Concourse Park, and this was filled with office and manufacturing, and it was a really a fun build over here. And I'm going to need to have some additional people working in this space. So I thought this was a great little section here to build out a nice big residential area. And it's going to be low density. It's going to be low density, not a lot of tall towers or anything like that. But you can see we've got some inter interesting topography to work with with this hill in the center, the ridge in the back there. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, anyhow, I just threw a lot at you guys and, and I'm really looking forward to diving in here. So with all that as a backdrop, let's do this. So we're going to start with building out our road grid. And since this is kind of an interesting space, I've got these sharp angles here and here. I want to take advantage of that and put something that's kind of more grid like in this space down here. I've got this little berm that a hill, I guess, that I'm, I'm working with in the center. So I want to respect that. And then I've got some topography that comes up this hill here. And then, of course, you've got the ridge. So I want to make it more organic in this part of the build and a little bit more structured in this part of the build. So let's start by coming down right here and grabbing a two-lane road, just a simple two-lane road, and stemming right out of this, this intersection here, maybe to about there. That's probably good. And then I want to come back over on this side. I'm going to turn my terrain lines on. And you can see, ideally, I'd like to have a road that kind of follows along this little terrain line here. And it can curve a little bit and create, create a little more graceful form, but eventually feed its way up into this little ravine and then reattach to here. So this is probably the place to stem off from, maybe like that. And then I'm gonna turn on this continuous curve. I'm gonna start from here. I'm gonna bend out in this direction and make my way around here. And you can see I could follow this terrain line a little bit if we wanted to, just kind of come out to, uh, let's, let's just come out about 28 meters. And then I'm gonna bend ever so slightly back in this direction here, go straight for a little bit. And then I'm gonna snake this. I'm gonna come out like so and then work it back over in. And then what I'll do is I'll come back to a reg regular, is it simple curve? And I'm gonna turn this, this zone, this guideline back on and then run out and attach back to there. And what I've created is just this little windy curvy cut through road that's gonna allow us to put in maybe some decorative, you know, forest and gardens kind of back in there underneath this big retaining wall that sits here by the university. And maybe, I don't know, if, we, if we're smart about it, we could probably even create some walking paths that come down that, that hill there. So that's our first piece. Now let's turn our attention way back over here and start to build out the more gridded part of our, uh, of our uh, road network. So let's just uh, build up kind of a traditional grid pattern in here. I think I'd like to start with um, just coming down into this corner here and using our existing squares and just run off in this direction here. Eh, maybe to there for now. I think I want to bring this one straight out of here up till the point where it gets close to that um, this this little ridge line there. You can see that that line start to curve around that hill. And in fact, maybe that's the first thing we should do. Let's frame up that hill. That'll be a better plan. So I'm going to come out with a continuous curve and just bring this out. So it just kind of wraps around this little hill here, using that as our you know, as our, as our guideline, we'll just run back up into here and then on into this road here. Yeah. Framing this hill up and we'll come and do the same thing coming in the other direction here. Maybe we just bring this up like so. There, now we've kind of framed up this little hill. It'll be fun to put homes on that. 
And then we've got this little grid area down in here. I think I just want to come straight out of this, bring this right along here up to about there. And now we can come in here with this road. Let's just bring this road straight on up through and connect into um, the road that we established previously. I'm going to turn off my grids. I just want to run right straight through it and then I can trim it off. Yeah, something like that. Now let's come in here and see the uh, the terrain there. Okay, so I think I'd like to have this road come up eh, pretty close to this anyways, maybe about to there, and then just head on up till it's pretty flat, maybe there, and then cut back across. Yeah, that's a pretty good size space there. And now I can bring this road straight on through to the other one and create another big box. How far did I go here? One, two, three, I left six squares in the middle here. So let's do the same thing coming in this direction. There, and that's a pretty good size grid in there. And now let's bring this road out to here and then just straight on up into this pattern here. We'll trim this off. And I've got a little curve where I can drop in some some homes kind of in here as well. And we can put a, like some, some gridded homes in there. I'm gonna do the same kind of configuration in this area here too, so sit tight. Now we've got those gridded areas in place and we can get on to doing the fun stuff. I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna take a two lane road and go straight across here. How far is this, 64 meters? Let's do the same thing going off in this direction here. So from here, I just wanna go out 64 meters, go straight, and then bring that back up into here. So I've got a kind of a good match over here. And then I can come in with our continuous curve. I'm right out here and kind of follow along this this other arterial road and at this nice little two square interval coming off of the arterial. And then I'll bring this back up and have it bend and just kind of sweep in gently into that one there. Just so it's got a little bit of character in that curve and that'll allow us to put a bunch of homes here. Now, if I come back in here and how big those homes are gonna be, I think they're probably gonna be like four by fours. So I just wanna follow that curve if I can and then I'll use sidewalks to make sure that I can secure build squares on, on each of these two major roads cutting through here. So I think that'll be pretty nice. Now let's come back over here into this space. I wanna come right off of this. Maybe I'll trim that piece back. Go with a continuous curve that comes out. It's fairly tight in this curve here. Yeah, and then let's get these terrain lines turned back on. This is gonna be my little windy road that makes its way up on this hill. So let's come up here. I'll hit a terrain line right about there and I want to come up here and this is where I'm going to start to switch back and come right up this ridge and then bring this right along this this darker ridge line here you can see the one I'm following just bring this all the way up and around to here and this will be a dead end it'll be just kind of a dead end down here at the end but you can see I've used those terrain lines really well and if we put homes up here it'll uh, kind of accentuate this hill, this little rise up here. I think that'll turn out really nicely. Okay, so now let's turn our attention to this, this hill back up in here. This should be fun. Now I wanna run up to here and kind of do a similar technique on this ridge up here. I just want this to frame up and around this ridge. So maybe I'll start from the top this time and work my way back down. So I'll just come out with this continuous curve, follow along this ridge line here. I don't want that to be a right angle. Uh, just come right down along here. And then as I get down to this space here, we'll come out here and then we're gonna switch it back the other direction here. Yeah, I think a 90 degree curve is fine there. And then I wanna bring it back down to, ooh, maybe right where these two different textures hit. And so now we've got this little windy road that makes its way up to the top of this ridge. And you can see I could put some pretty nice size homes up on this ridge, and then we can work with some landscaping to kinda of, uh, soften that up there. So yeah, that, I think that's gonna be great. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I need to tackle this big area here, right? The whole region that gives its gives us its name of um, Aviators Ridge, and it's the ridge up here. And I think this is going to be <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. Let's just come in here with our two lane roads, and we're to stem off of here. And I'm going to use I'll start off with just a you know nice little straight piece here, but then I'm going to start really using the uh, really using the contour lines here quite a bit. So let's just uh, bend our way around here. 
and you can see uh, this gets pretty pretty steep up in here i don't want to get too close to that ridge because i think i'm going to have to switch back and come back up again over here and make my way up along this ridge line and i think i want to take it as far up here as i can you can see there's a darker ridge line here that i'm following where it's just kind of skirting across the right across the top of this ridge. Yeah, just like so. And we're going to continue to to work our way around here. And so now you can see that's a very organic loop that makes its way through there. In fact, I might even want to cry, try and crawl an alleyway through here if I can, but you can see this is going to make for a very interesting looking neighborhood. All right. Well, that is the kind of the crux, if you will, of our of our road grid for Aviators Ridge. I like the way that this is starting out. Now, before we start painting in all of our residential, and we've got a lot of residential to put into this space, I want to come through and I want to define the space and make sure that we've got some services, basic services set up in this area. So let's do this. Let's jump out and grab this uh, district creation tool. And let's gonna let's build this out so that um, we've got a nice, clearly defined district. And I think what I'd like to do is, in fact, let's just grab this little node and slide it back here just a little bit. Yeah, and then do the same thing with this one. Just we're not interfering there. Now I can start from here, bring out a new node, and just work our way around the existing university district here. There. <laughs> and I don't think Park Park is probably the name we were going for. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and rename that Aviators Ridge. There we go. And now like, we can decide, are there any services in this area that we want to have? Say, maybe this is a gated community. You know, this is, um, yeah, this, this is probably a good idea. And then, um, I don't think I want a heavy traffic ban. And I could probably put in ooh, recycling. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's let's put in some recycling and maybe some speed bumps. Yeah, let's do that as well. Just kind of let's make it kind of a little bit more of an upscale kind of neighborhood. All right, so now we can jump in and drop in some services. And I thought down this area here would be a good place to start with that. The first thing I want to do is I want to bring in an elementary school, and I'll probably use a small elementary school for this build. And ideally, I think what we can do is try and dedicate. Uh, elementary school availability to just this area, just kind of gate it off into this area. Uh, this elementary school will serve, what is it, 400 students? Now, I don't know how many are ultimately going to be here in Aviators Ridge, but, uh, you know, I think we can go ahead and use Aviators Ridge as our operating district and just kind of make this exclusive to this area. Then the next thing I want to do is I want to bring in, uh, I think we should probably bring in some fire service. So let's grab a regular firehouse, just an old school firehouse here, one of the original ones. Ooh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's come in here with an alley road and just bring that right off of here. And let's see if we can drop that firehouse right in along that little alley road. What's that look like? Yeah, that's kind of cool. I mean, they got the little steeple there right out here at the beginning of the neighborhood. I like that. And then um, I think one of the things we need to bring in is a post office. We should have a post office in the area here. A small one to start. Let's bring that in. Hmm, ideally, it might line up with this. So let's just come in here with that post office. We'll turn off our snapping. And where's the road? It faces that way. So let's do that. Let's let's get this angled up so that it you know sits right up adjacent to this to this uh, fire station here, this firehouse. Boom, like that. And then I can just extend this little road right into it. Oh, I think that looks just fine. And this, this lines up nicely. That'll allow us to come in and decorate along there. Yeah. And then let's grab a, um, a small medical clinic. You gotta have some health care in this area. Um, I think I wanna leave this area open for elementary school expansion. So maybe we'll just jump across the street. We'll. Now let's come out here with a road, just like this. In fact, it could probably just be an alley. We'll just run straight out with an alley road to... I think we probably only need to go about there. Let's just see. Take this small medical clinic and just drop that right in here into this space. How does that look? Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I love that. So let's come in here and take that road out delete that for now and I want to bring in a regular road just come right out of here 
out of this intersection, bring that out like so. Drop in our med clinic right down along here. Yeah, that just looks a little better. Looks a little bit more finished, doesn't it? Okay. And uh, let's see. I don't think we're going to need police in the area. I think we're doing probably well in that from that standpoint. And we also put up the gated community uh, policy. So that should go well. Ooh, let's make sure that we select operating districts, districts for each of these. So our firehouse, our post office, and our medical clinic. They're all dedicated now to Aviators Ridge. So now we've got some great services in this area. Uh, you know, I should probably bring in a crematorium. Maybe not right in the neighborhood proper. Um, let's just see here if there's a there's a spot adjacent. And that's a that's a hill here. Oh, maybe this little cut through road over here. Let's take a look at that. That's probably okay. It's not sitting in the neighborhood proper. It's kind of this little I don't know dead space, if you will. Ooh, pardon the pun. Did not mean that. <laughs> in the space between the University Village and Aviators Ridge. So probably a good location for that. Uh, let's go with, um, you know, we got to put in some mailboxes since we're going to have postal service in this area. So let's do that. Uh, let's grab, how do we do that? Mailboxes. I'm just going to space them out here and there. Maybe we'll put one, I don't know, maybe right along here. There. Now we've got our mail service set up here in Aviators Ridge. You can see our residential demand is starting to tick up and now is probably a good time for us to start bringing in homes. All right, let's get to work on that. So let's jump down in here and start building out our um, our residential neighborhoods. I like the idea of us coming in with a European style, uh, just regular EU low density housing, just to start this things off. So let's come down in here and we'll do a two by three. Yeah, and then I want those two by threes to carry all the way down kind of along the front of this neighborhood. And then as I jump down here, you can see there's just an ever so slight elevation change between this road here and this road here. It just dips down slightly. In fact, you can see that it kind of slopes down just very gently from these roads up here all the way down into this space here. And what I want to do is I want to come in behind this now with a European style. Now let's make sure we change the orientation of this one so it's facing, facing the street we want it to face. Now I want to come in with that EU style, European style, low density waterfront housing. I think this is just a sharp look and we'll do that there. Yeah, it's facing the right way. We'll paint these in behind. There we go. Now they're all facing, of course, the Broad Street and the King Street. Yeah, and that's going to give us a pretty unique look in this space. Uh, and I want to do the same thing over here on Anchor and Middle Street. So sit tight while I do that real quick like. there. Now they're all facing the, the proper streets. I left a gap here because we had an odd number of spaces, but that's okay. It'd be nice to actually put in some, maybe some trees along here and we can kind of you know, do something a little, you know, decorative along the space here. I think that'll be important. Okay, cool. Now let's turn our attention to the Aviators Ridge, the actual ridge up here with Anchor Street, and let's build out some bigger waterfront housing kind of developments up there. Now they are Obviously, there's no water nearby, but I, I just like the look and feel. And I think a three by five configuration up here might be pretty, pretty stately sitting up on top of that ridge. Let's just go three by five. Let's take advantage of that all the way throughout. This one will have to shrink down to three by four, three by four, three by four, and three by four to finish it off. And yeah, that's a that's a pretty significant tearing of the landscape, but we can come back and smooth this out. We we'll take a look at these homes here. This beautiful home here. Sits up above, just up above the neighborhood here. Gets a great view of downtown Pangasas Bay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's going to be a really nice home there. And just so we can kind of see what we're doing here, I would then grab my level terrain tool, maybe pick this elevation out here, flatten out kind of to the edge of these homes here. And then work my way back down with this uh, smoothing tool and just kind of extend this hill out. And that's okay. I kind of anticipated that that's how this might this might look, but we can smooth this out coming down to the street and really make this just filled in with lush, thick uh, vegetation down along here. So it's um, you know it's kind of a, a private retreat, if you will, for each of these homes sitting on the ridge. Nice. Okay, let's dive right into this space down here. 
I want to come in with my you know, pathways and turn off all the snapping, maybe put on the continuous curve and just come in here and frame things up, grab the build squares that I want and put them on the streets that I want them to be on. So you know, my thought was, let's try to maximize the layout of this street here and then this street here. But now you can see I can put in some homes. Now let's do three by five down here. One three by five. Uh, let's do, let's just put them in here nice and tight. Three by five, three by five, etc. And then down in here, I think we can do, uh, let's do a three by four. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll come back in here with three by fours. There, and I can make some sort of walking access coming through there. Yeah, I think that'll be nice. And then up here, uh, let's just do um, let's do something a little bigger again. Let's do a three by five there, a three by five here, and we can kind of gap them. Well, let's see here. Yeah, we can gap those by one square and a three by four there, just to kind of give it a little bit more space coming in back there. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's that's probably a good start for this area here. Oh, let's jump down here. These are starting to fill in, so you can kind of see the pattern I'm going for. Just a simple European home down in here with the little little garden house behind it. I like it. And then you've got the Mediterranean style of the waterfront properties filling in behind it. Now this is all going to be that Mediterranean style, but again, like I said, I just wanted to kind of frame it up with these uh, this a different style here, just to create some, I don't know, visual interest and appeal. Okay, let's turn our attention up to the big ridge up here. I like this idea of giving us views from, from up here to the airport. And I think we can start off with just big three by fives up in this space. So let's do, yeah, let's do one there and we'll do one there. Just kind of make our way up along this ridge line with three by fives. And I want these to have the, the look and the feel of big kind of estate homes up in here that are, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a nice neighborhood. I, you know, we've got it flagged as a gated community and uh, let's just take advantage of that and put some really big, beautiful homes up here. Yeah. So now as you're driving along this, uh, what is this, Manor Street? Manor Street. Well, my, it is, it, they are manors, so I think that's probably a good, it's a good name for the street. And you can kind of see how we're going to have just this spectacular views of the airport looking over this way. And then as we flip around to this other side here, well, we might be able to squeeze some homes in. Mm, actually, these homes up here, the back windows are going to look out over downtown. The front windows are going to look out over the airport. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be pretty sharp. Okay, cool. And then let's jump up onto this little hill here and, and start painting these in as well. Uh, I think what we can do is let's put in some smaller two by, hmm, yeah, maybe this is a two by four here. Maybe this is a two by three here, a two by four there, two by four there and then a two by four there. Whoops, this was supposed to be a two by four. Let's try that again. There we go. Yeah, and then I think we can do stuff across the street here. We can put smaller homes out on this side. So maybe a three by three, three by three, just to kind of create some uniformity. Maybe this is a three by four, and this one can be a three by five, just a little bigger. Yeah, like that. And then we'll come in here and give a similar kind of smoothing treatment than we did that we did up here on Aviators Ridge. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think I like the way that this is going to shape up. You know, I can come back in and do a lot more, a lot more, a lot more decor along the way too, and, and fill out some more residential. All right. Let's paint in down this in, in this area now too. Now, before I start filling in all these little neighborhood squares down here, I want to take you on a little journey. I'm going to run you across the bay. I'm going to go through downtown and all the way over to an area called 10K Cove. And we built this area out quite some time ago, many months ago, um, in celebration of our 10,000th subscriber. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. But where I really want to take you down here is this area here. Now, this is an illustration of what the the European style waterfront homes look like as they level up. This one is level one. You can see it's level one and their household income is, is wretched. That's unfortunate because they're in a beautiful part of town. But you can see how simple this home looks like. He's got even bars on the windows. Boy, he must be expecting to get robbed. 
But then as they level up, this is level two here, and then eventually they kind of start to look like these homes across the street. This is a level five, this is a level five, this is a level four, and this is a level five. So, so as I take a look at the level four, again, more elegant, you've got the upstairs kind of uh, you know, patio area here, uh, nice little backyards or front doors coming through here. And then these areas have these nice, beautiful front yards, nice, elegant backyard patios. This one's got a little swimming pool in the corner here, a little above ground swimming pool. And then you can see it's just a, a cleaner, more elegant look. And that's kind of the look that I'm going for as we continue to level up in that area. So let's jump all the way back across where we were. You can see, by the way, this is this was last episode, Concourse Park. We put in all of this um, office and then uh, commercial and industrial in this space. And there's a call out for labor. We need people to work, which is good news because you can see our populations starting to increase and we're starting to build out more residential. So let's just jump right on in and tackle that. I wanna just continue this pattern of this low density, let's go back to European style, low density waterfront homes. And we're gonna do that in these two and these two squares. So why don't you sit tight while I tackle that. Yeah, that's going to fill in really nicely. I think that's going to that's going to thicken up. And again, you saw the look that we're going for over there in 10K Cove. Now, I've got a little bit more room back here. I think I could come in with some slightly larger builds. Maybe take this and and make these some 3x5s back in here. Started off with 3x5s anyway. One, two, three, four of those. I'll leave a gap of one square here, and then I'll come in with some 3x4s. Just build a couple of those in there. Yeah, and let that fill out. Maybe we'll just leave this space here to... Thicken up with, um, uh, maybe we can drop in a park. Say, speaking of parks, let's do that. Let's find a couple of parks that might work in here. Uh, maybe, uh, is there a large playground? Would that fit? Yeah, that would fit right in here. Um, hmm. Or maybe in right next to, maybe right next to this home here. Maybe I'll, I'll take it out a couple of squares. It can be a corner park down here. Yeah, that would be probably pretty good. Why not? And then, you know, maybe there's a, Mm, tiny city park that one how does that look okay and uh yeah this, how about if it cuts right through there because that would give us walking access through this little area here Ooh, i like that that's kind of cool yeah and then we could probably drop in a small playground as well let's just see how our park coverage is looking though yeah i think we're probably doing all right there i don't want to overdo it because remember that's what got us into some financial troubles earlier not that i have any financial issues but look at that yeah, our, our current trend is we're only making about 173000 an hour. I just don't want to push ourselves. Okay, cool. And then let's just jump back up here. By the way, this little aviator's ridge up here. I didn't finish putting in smaller homes right up along the top here. One, two. There we go. Just kind of fill that in a little bit. And then maybe we can drop in some homes down along here. So let's take this little pathway out. Right. And then maybe right down along in this little corner here, we can do something. Let's just check our our topography here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I want to eat into that hill. So I think we're good there. Uh, how are we sitting up along this ridge? Oh, yeah, that's right. We were going to come in with some smaller, maybe three by, I don't know, maybe some three by fours in here or three by threes. Let's do that. Three by three. Yeah, something like that. I don't want to get it too dense up there. I just kind of want to have it, um, I just want to have it filled in. You know, one more thing I want to do before I, before I move on in there and before it escapes me is these parking lots here. I think I'd actually like to put a uh, larger parking lot on this side of the street here and then maybe free up this corner here for, I don't know, a park or maybe a bus loop. I think a little bus run kind of making its way down along this valley would be a great thing. So let's do this. Let's Let's come in here. Uh, I'm just going to knock out these two parking lots. And then I want to grab a larger parking lot. Uh, maybe a large one. Let's see if that'll fit into here. It does. It fits right into this space. Mm, yeah, I kind of like that. So let's drop that in. Yeah, right off the university campus. And then this little spot down here. Can we turn this into 
a um hmm, this look like a little bus loop down here let's see yeah like that we'll drop in a bus shelter right here yeah let's see here we probably want little bus stops along the way So that'll work. That'll that'll help out. Let's grab our bus line tool here and uh, let's create a new bus line. We're going to drop from here. And then we'll jump over to this station here. In fact, I'm going to leave it as a waypoint for the moment. Just bear with me and then I'll come back again here, here, and then all the way back to here. I'm going to hit pause. I'll select that bus route. Bus line 38. We're just going to ride a regular bus. It's going to be uh, our dark blue bus. And it's going to be called... Yeah, and that should be good. Uh, and the reason, before I want to activate this, the reason I left this as a waypoint and not an actual stop is because I think I want to come down in here with this bus line here. And I want to move, I just want to create a, a better waypoint for that bus line. So let's just grab this. I'd like this, as I'm thinking about it, just to kind of come around this loop like that. That was always my intention. Now I can take this one, uh, this, this blue one, and just bring it right into there as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's probably going to be good. It's going to come out of this, loop around, and head back down along over to here and service the neighborhood. All right, cool. Wow. Yeah, that was that was a lot of work, but you know, I think it gives us a better opportunity to have some some nice public transportation in the area. We'll create some walking paths that come down this hill. Uh, maybe I'll throw in some additional small homes along here and densify some things up. But it it feels like this is a really good place for us to jump into our beautification time lapse. Um, I like this way it's filling out here. We've got. Uh, about 198 homes in the area. We can probably add some more. The, the residents are starting to move in. And you can see they're almost all uneducated or poorly educated. They're kind of starting to work their way up that education tree. And, and that's because we've got the elementary school in the neighborhood. And I, we've got high school and university access right next door here. So I, I think they're going to be well served from an education standpoint. We'll just continue to let them you know, begin their journey and hopefully these jobs over here will start to get filled up as well. That would be really nice. All right. Well, why don't you guys just sit back, relax, enjoy the time lapse, and we'll catch you here afterwards where we can recap our sculpture.
right, welcome back. And I give you the Aviators Ridge neighborhood here in Pangasas Bay. <laughs> yeah, that was the subject of today's build, Aviators Ridge. And we put in this big, beautiful residential neighborhood. Residential that we desperately needed because we were starting to get into a little bit of a population free fall and we needed some homes for people to, to live in. So we put in our, our low density residential neighborhood and I think this one really turned out wonderfully. All right, let's just jump right on in because there's so much to unpack. I want to start with the ridge itself. And again, Aviators Ridge gets its name from this big, beautiful ridge that sits up above the Amelia Earhart International Airport. Now, it's an ideal location for you to come up and watch planes take off and land from the International Airport as all these new people coming into Pangasas Bay from the old world and then on into new points within the, uh, within the continent of Grand Vanillica. <laughs> but these homes sit up on this ridge and it's just a spectacular place for them to just to hang out and watch the planes take off and land. And then if you pivot around and look out their second story windows over here, you can see downtown Pangasas Bay in all of its glory. And of course, you can even maybe sneak a peek of the university with the big cathedral in the background over there. Yeah, just a wonderful, wonderful place. Now the ridge, you know, this neighborhood stayed right across the top of this ridge line over here and this road threaded its way through here. We have the snaking switchback kind of making its way down here. And I dropped in homes all the way along that road. So I think it's uh, it's just kind of a neat little neighborhood, very exclusive, tucked up on this hill. Okay, one of the things we did too is we tore out those old parking lots and brought in a big, large new parking lot and then really improved the west access to our university district. And that was uh, included this new bus stop and bus station that we have in here. I'm going to zoom right down on in here. And you can see I dropped in the bus station here. The blue line is is making its way all the way down to interchange right, interchange heights. And then I've got this shelter here in case it's raining, some beautiful plantings in here. Although the fall colors are in full bloom, um, you have to take my word for it. <laughs> there are lots of lovely blues and, and, and greens, and it's just a spectacular uh, uh, design in here. And I put out this little feature out in the center with some manicured lawns as well. But those buses snake their way down this, uh, this valley road here and deliver students uh, on into the west end of the college campus. So uh, that was a really welcome addition, and I think it's going to help out with traffic in this space as well. I put in this circular neighborhood up on the top here, and uh, this is going to be a bit of a sneak peek or sneak preview of, of our, our big top five development in a little bit here. But let's make our way down this little valley road here. I just love this little twisty turny valley road and on down to the uh, original starting point for this episode, which was this little gridded out neighborhood. Now, before I dive into the gridded out neighborhood, I want you to see these little walking paths and designs that I put on the edge here because we had a little extra space. And then we had our our gridded out neighborhood with our traditional European low density residential. And then tucked in behind it, we put in the waterfront properties. And as those level up, they are sure gonna be really beautiful and elegant. So I'm looking forward to that happening as well. I added during the time lapse some additional homes kind of tucked into here just to you know fill it out and densify it and we had dropped in a park here I dropped in a second one here now uh, it looks like we got some homeless there but uh, we're, we're starting to clean that up with that with that mod and then we continued that pattern over into this space here now the other thing we mentioned as we were building out the uh, the district is that this is a gated community so I did bring in you know this kind of this gate structure and some walls here um, I guess that's about what we can do with vanilla. We we don't have any extra props, but uh, I think it turned out really nicely and gets the message across that hey, this is a this is a bit of a an upscale development and a luxurious community. Now we've got our elementary school that sits in here, and you can see there's still a lot of blank concrete out here, and that's by design. I've taken that elementary school and I've restricted it to the Aviators Ridge district, but I also include interchange heights. And so we should start to fill this, fill this elementary school up. And as we do, I've left plenty of space for us to add extension wings and expand the uh, student count there. Continuing along our journey, we just extended this wall right down along our main arterial road. And then it makes our way down to this beautiful botanical gardens here. I needed a transition piece between our university, which sits up on the ridge here, and then down into this neighborhood. And you can see this walking path kind of snakes its way back down into here to this plaza area. And then I created some walking gardens into this space here. So I think it kind of breaks it up a little bit and maybe makes it a little less of a stark contrast between this upper level and this lower level down here uh, in just a kind of a nice elegant fashion. Now, the other thing I want to point out is our top five design element, which is yes, the summit 
at Aviators Ridge. <laughs> this is a very exclusive neighborhood as well. As you can see, we've got all these manicured lawns in here, and then I can dive down in here. Some really beautiful little floral gardens with palm trees up on there. And then these spectacular views of downtown Pangasas Bay on one side. And as you pivot and turn around, you can see the beautiful airport on the other side. So this is a very highly desirable neighborhood that even comes with its own little walking garden right in behind too. And again, like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing these homes level up because they're gonna become very elegant and this is gonna be a very highly desirable neighborhood. All right, well, that's gonna wrap up today's episode. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed watching this one as much as I enjoyed making it. This was a lot of fun and, and it allowed us to do some really kind of creative and artistic things here with some basic, basic low density residential. Now you're going to want to sit tight because you're not going to want to miss the cinematics at the end. Those are always a treat. And just as a reminder, this channel is nothing without you guys, the wonderful viewers. Uh, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. And so if you saw something that you liked today, please be sure to leave us a comment below. I love to hear from you and I just love to hear your comments and thoughts. And also the engagement really helps with this algorithm, this YouTube alg algorithm to distribute our content to a wider audience, which helps us grow and helps us keep improving. All right, and also a big shout out to all of our Patreon members and our YouTube members. Your generosity is so much appreciated. Make sure to go check out the four levels of Patreon membership that are available out on our page. We'll leave the link below. Also, while you're at it, make sure to chip away at that like button and hammer that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the happenings here in Pangasis Bay and our Grand Vanillica series as well. Okay, with that, I'm going to bid you guys and gals a fond farewell. Until next time, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.